now we are in the manufacture or mill phase of the CAD CAM design. We have a few menu options within this phase of the process. You will notice menus for display objects, view options, and analyzing tools menus you've already seen before and should be familiar with. Use those as you see fit or how best works for you. You will also see a menu called Manufacture. Within this menu, you will see an area to select the mill at the top or choose other options by selecting the drop down menu. We can also export the case as an STL file using the export to folder option. You would use the export option if you were going to send the case to a lab to be milled. We're not gonna be doing that in this video, so let's select the mill you will be using. Once we select our mill of choice, you will notice that we have a few options for how we will mill, our grinding options. In CIRAC, you have grinding and milling. Grinding is completed using diamond burrs and milling is done using carbide burrs. Typically zirconia and temporary materials would be milled and glass ceramics are fabricated by grinding. Fine milling, which is the normal default option is used for most restorations. This mode focuses on the surface quality of the restoration while reducing stress on the material itself. This is an option for when the restoration quality has priority over the milling time. Fast mill will reduce the mill time by up to 40%, but will leave the surface slightly rougher. Use this mode if production time is the highest priority. For example, you could use this for temporary restorations or for composite based restorations. The extra fine option is only available within the milling units that have four motors. This option uses both normal and extra fine grinding burrs in two separate processing steps and can provide deeper fissures, smoother occlusal surfaces, added stability on irregular margins, and very detailed embrasures on bridges. The machining times are double those with fine mode. Occlusal offset is below the milling modes. This is used to apply or remove material over the entire occlusal and sizal surface. This value concerns only the grinding result. The effects are not visible in the design phase or in the manufacturing preview. You can use this parameter as compensation if the occlusal surfaces of your restorations are generally too high or too low in practice. You can use it in large restorative cases to open the bite by a certain measure, and you can use it to systematically move the restoration out of occlusion. Now the software will analyze the size of your restoration and will default to the smallest possible block that can accommodate your restoration. This is done on purpose and really is done to conserve block material. Why use a bigger block when a smaller block will suffice? This saves money. You will see that for this restoration, the default block is an Emacs CAD block size C14. If you click on the drop down menu, you will see that an I-12 has a warning symbol next to it because it is too small and will not work properly. But you can also see that we could select larger blocks like a C16 if we wanted. Why would we do that? Well, if that's all we have, that is an option. The last thing we do in this phase is adjust the mill position. Uh, this tool is used to position the sprue and to locate the restoration in the block. The move tool allows the operator to position the restoration within the block. This tool is useful for polychromatic, real life, or other multicolored blocks. It's best not to move the restoration closer to the mandrel as this will cause longer mill times and instrument wear. Sprue tools allow you to rotate the restoration within the block to set the sprue where you would like it. The software defaults to the most efficient milling, but may leave the sprue on the mesial distal contact area, which is not ideal. I will typically try to position the sprue on the lingual of the restoration if possible, but sometimes you just place it where it works. At this point, we are ready to start milling. Be warned that when milling, you should be aware that you may see milling errors such as wrong block size, water level low, or worn burrs. We have some separate videos that show you how to deal with these milling errors so that you can get your restoration finished and in the patient's mouth. At this point, let's start milling. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a button that says Start Manufacture. Go ahead and click that and start milling. 
All right, so after you hit the start button, um, what's gonna happen is, is the system starts to process what you're asking it to do. And one of the things that's gonna happen is we're gonna see a little window pop up here in one second. So now the, the milling machine down the hall is actually positioning the instruments or positioning the burrs. And now we're seeing a window that pops up. So this happens every time you go to mill. So what it's telling us right now is that we need to insert the block that we plan to use, which in this case is the Emacs CAD C14 block. And we need to close the milling chamber door. So at this point, I need to go down the hall to the milling machine and actually put the block in before I start milling. So I could put the block in and come back and hit start, or I can actually start the milling process at the milling machine after the block is inserted. All right, so now we're at the mill, and from this point, we have to insert the block in. So we need to open up the lid here. So as we look in here, you're gonna see that there's no block in there currently. Um, you're gonna see two burrs on each side. So that means that we're currently running a four motor system. So we have um, two burr sets. So a burr set constitutes one burr on this side and one burr on this side. So we have two burr sets on our total in this machine. Uh, and on the left side, what we're looking at here is the step burrs. So these are the burrs that actually mill the intaglio surface of the crown or the inside of the crown. And then on the right side, we have the cylindrical burrs that mill the external surface or the cameo surface of the crown. So we need to insert our block. So I have here an LT shade A1. So make sure you pick your shade C14 block, which is what we said we were going to mill. So I'm going to insert this in. Now, when you insert this, it's very important that you make sure it's seated all the way. So as I insert it, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it and basically rotate and push in until I feel that drop. So did you hear that? So we're going to do that again. We're going to rotate, push, and feel that drop. There it is. And so what that does is it makes a very flush area here where the block meets the uh, part here that holds that. I'm not sure what that's called. All right, now that that's seated all the way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten that into place and secure it. To do that, we're gonna use the uh, screwdriver system that comes with the milling machine. We're gonna insert that here into the screw and we're gonna rotate that as we hold the block. We'll rotate that clockwise. And then when you start to rotate it uh, just enough, what you're gonna notice is it's gonna start to get tight and you're gonna feel some tension and some pressure. Keep turning, keep turning. You're gonna feel it pop right there. When that pops like that, that means that this is secure. And if you don't hear the pop, you haven't turned it enough yet. So you need to hear that pop and make sure that the block is good and secure. All right, now that we are um, ready, we got the block in, we can shut the lid back down. And then I can either start the milling process here on the milling machine or I can go back to the actual computer screen and start it there.